here's just two more slides. So focusing on the dealers now says, if you don't want the central bank to be acting every day, okay, you need to put, put, some, put some robustness okay, in the dealers. It's the dealers you want to be focusing on. So you want some kind of liquidity reserves there. You want some kind of capital reserves there. In particular, you want them down here with the derivative dealer, okay? Because that's the new one. That's the one that we haven't really experienced very much. Um, derivative dealer and global money dealer. Now here I think this distinction that we have elaborated in the class between a mashed book dealer and a speculative dealer is helpful also. Because a matched book dealer, okay, to the extent that they are a matched book dealer, they don't really need capital. But they do need liquidity. Okay? So liquidity reserves are important for the matched book part of the system. But if you're a speculative dealer, you need to be able to take losses. You need to be able to absorb losses. And that means capital. Okay? So this part here, capital reserves, is important for the speculative dealer part, the proprietary dealer part. And again, this is true for the derivative dealer uh, as well as the money market dealer. So four ideas to guide that are in my mind right now, okay, and they might change tomorrow because this is a moving target. Okay. Thinking about regulating the shadow banking system of the future. Four ideas. One is that the key players that you need to be focusing on Okay, are not the shadow banks, okay, but the dealers, okay, the money dealers and the derivative dealers. Two, that you want to distinguish between the mashed book dealers and the, and, the, and the proprietary dealers, the speculative dealers, and focus on liquidity for the matched book dealers and capital for the proprietary ones. You try to put lots of capital requirements into a matched book dealer, it may do no good. You know, you're, you need a liquidity backstop there. Liquidity kills you quick. Key backstop, well, I say that. So then the fourth one, which I just added sort of today or yesterday, okay, and I'm still thinking this one through, is that the survival constraint is not just about payment flows, but also about collateral flows here, okay, because this is a system of secured funding, and the funding is secured by collateral. And the collateral is moving. It's, it's, it's moving. And we, we saw in this crisis what killed AIG. It was, a, it was a collateral call. It was a collateral call by Goldman and Societe Generale. Okay? That's what killed them. Um, they maybe were not insolvent. Um, actually, if you think about fundamental valuations or something, um, but they were, they were killed by a collateral call. Um, so this, this is a feature of the modern system that is inevitable because you're talking about secured money market funding. It's a money market funding, you know, shadow banking is money market funding of capital market lending. This capital market lending, these are the securities that are the collateral for the money market funding. So they go together, they go together. Uh, and uh, so these are the four kind of ideas that I would put, that, that, that come from thinking about the shadow banking system and thinking about this crisis through the lens of the ideas of a course like this, okay? That it, start, it makes you think these sorts of things. They just follow from, from this, way, this way of thinking. Um, other things, no doubt, follow too, but we, we aren't there yet. Um, I think we're at a Badgett moment, 1873. We're building it from scratch. Um, and we need to uh, get on with it. I hope maybe some of you will help me. Yes? What do we propose, I mean, in regulation to deter the shadow, the, the dealers from falling back so much on the Fed? Because, it, you know, that's clearly a key part if the Fed is to be a backstop. What sort of regulations do you put in place to deter? Well, so here's the question. So how do you keep them? from relying on the Fed. Um, the, main thing is, the main thing is remembering this diagram here. Okay. 
This is falling back on the Fed, the excess exposure. Okay, so this is what you want to keep from happening. Okay, and the way you keep this from happening, okay, is by making sure that the dealers have the speculative dealers have adequate capital that they're not going to be shifting in their 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 financing abilities. That's what caused this problem in this in this picture. Is it kind of hard to determine, like in practice, though, the difference between a speculative dealer yes. and Yes, it is. I mean, you can't draw a sharp line between between them, um, and so you're going to have to have capital for the matchbook dealers too, probably. Um, but so the the having adequate capital in order to absorb losses, okay, is key. The other thing that this picture um, reminds you always is that the the role of the central bank, okay, should be creating the outside spread, not the inside spread. So sometimes I said in an earlier, earlier thing I said, the role of the modern central bank is to insure freely but at a high premium, okay? Or you know, to put a floor, a fl you know, floor under capital markets but at 80 cents on the dollar, okay? So make it very uh, uneconomic, okay? The Fed didn't really do that this time, do you agree? Um, it, in some of the programs, it did. In some of the programs, it did try. I mean, and the ones that liquidate were self-liquidating were sort of that way. That it was creating an outside spread, um, and there was some attempt to do this, but mostly. But then they lost track of this, and I think you could make this a principle. And once you bring this up, it's just an analogy to what Badgett did. Badgett in 1873 said, "Lend freely at a high interest rate against good security." Okay. Well, that high interest rate part, okay, was meant to uh, avoid exactly the problem you're talking about. The modern analog to that is outside spread. Okay, you want to be away from the market um, in your in your in your prices. But when you're away from the market, you should be acting boldly when you're away from the market. In part, the Fed didn't do that. You know, it's always catching up. It's always playing catch-up ball and being forced into a position of doing something on the weekend. I mean, you lived through those years, okay? Um, we need to bring this up to consciousness as a principle, as a principle of central bank intervention, so that people know when the central bank is going to intervene and when it is not, okay? And that if it intervenes, it's going to be expensive for you. Okay, so you better sort this out, okay, if you can. But if you come to the Fed, do not come and beat them over the head. Come begging, okay, and that you need them. You need them, and then you're, you're going to be at their mercy. Um, that's the idea. This all happened way too rapidly with much too little understanding of how the system worked. And so there were lots of mistakes made. I think that's right. There, there, there were. And we need to learn the lessons of that experience. Um, going forward, because it's not the last financial crisis. Inherent instability of credit. There's going to be another one. Okay, not tomorrow, I hope, um, but uh, maybe tomorrow. Uh, we're not. We're not. We're not sure. We're not sure.